French cuisine has five mother sauces. If you can master these five sauces on which just about everything else is based, you'll be on your way to mastering the dishes of that region. But if Mexican food had mother sauces, this would indisputably be one of them. For the purposes of this video, let's call it red chili sauce because the exact specific name someone else might call it is tricky. Technically, it is a salsa, since salsa is just Spanish for sauce. But chile colorado might be more accurate since it's made out of chiles and is the color red. Calling it enchilada sauce would be like calling mayonnaise BLT spread. True, but detrimentally specific. If you use vinegar in your version of this sauce, then it becomes adobo, and adobo is one of those words like curry that's so varied across so many different cultures that it starts to mean nothing if you think about it too long. But if we can put all of the naming details aside and just call it red chili sauce, I'd rather show you how to make it. I start with around 10 dried guajillo peppers and around five dried anchos. Peppers are all different shapes and sizes, so I weighed mine, and wouldn't you know, they both came out to about two ounces each. I also add a third spicy chili called pekin. These can be hard to find, so you could just use two chiles de arbol. You could probably get away with a spoonful of generic crushed red chili flake, or just leave the third element out completely. By the way, this is another good use for chipotle peppers left over from making tinga, but now I am riffing to the viewer's detriment, so I'll try to stay on track. The guajillos are the backbone, bringing that signature red color. The anchos are there for raisiny sweetness, and the third optional pepper is just there for spice. If you wanted a sort of minimum viable product, you could use nothing but guajillos as long as the weight totals four ounces. Assuming that you successfully acquired the goods, here's the technique. If you've ever used the phrase, no sticks, no stems, no seeds, you'll find this very familiar. Rip the stems off of each pepper and throw them out. Tear the chilies open and scrape out the seeds. These have the physical properties of all of the dried fruits you've worked with before. Brittle and hard to work with if they're old and stale, but flexible and easier to tear open if fresh. Don't drive yourself crazy trying to 100% this game. You do not have to remove every single seed. But you also shouldn't just skip this step. This part is non-negotiable. But this part is negotiable. I toast the peppers in a dry pan over medium high heat for 90 seconds while stirring and flipping. It is an extra step, but it makes them more pliable and awakens those deep, roasty, almost chocolatey flavors. You should be aware that these can burn very easily without changing color, so you gotta use your nose. As soon as you smell chili in the air, cut the heat. Again, you don't have to toast them if you don't want to, but you do have to soften them. If you don't soak these in hot water, they won't blend properly. Put boiling hot water into a pot or a bowl and let the chilies soak in it for, let's say, 10 to 15 minutes. Those are hands-off minutes. There's nothing to do during this time. So what I do is crank a grill or a dry pan to medium-high heat and char half a large onion plus four or five garlic cloves with the skin still on for burn protection. This is supposed to be a chili sauce above all, but I like charred allium flavor. That's the beauty of making red chili sauce. Every household, every bloodline, they all have their own story to tell. We've all got our grandma's recipes and our own little tweaks. I've seen recipes with a little bit of semi-sweet chocolate in it. I remember seeing Claudette Zepeda add kombu and bonito flakes to hers as a reference to her time growing up in Japan. This sauce is so expressive and personal. How could you not adore it? 10 minutes are up. All that's left now is to place the chili peppers into the blender along with my charred half onion, the roasted garlic cloves, which I squeezed out of the paper, a teaspoon of kosher salt, a teaspoon of Mexican oregano, and a teaspoon of ground cumin. The only subjective variable is deciding how much water to add. You need at least enough water to get things to blend into a liquid. Start with a few pulses, then a constant low speed, then crank it up to max so you obliterate all the solids. The sauce will be thick, but it shouldn't be gloopy. The French would call this nappe, just thick enough to coat the back of a spoon. If yours looks more like pancake batter, use the chili-infused soaking water to thin it out a little bit at a time. I ended up using three cups for this one. This is the last step, and it is optional, but I do it every time. If you push the sauce through a strainer, you filter out any chunks of skin, seeds, or pulp. The perfectly smooth sauce that you get after straining looks nice and refined. Just taste it for salt, and you're done. That wasn't so bad, was it? If I called for this whole process as the first step in making some other recipe, most viewers would never make it. But if you can become the kind of person who always has this in their freezer, you start to see it as the mission critical ingredient you need for many traditional Mexican recipes. I know someone's watching this thinking, okay, I might try it, but good God, this recipe makes a whole pitcher full. That's quite the commitment for something I might not use very often, but I must encourage you to make a big blender's worth. You can portion it out into freezer bags and keep it for at least a year. If you did that, say goodbye to ever buying canned enchilada sauce. Dark, rich, and chili forward, 
This is your new enchilada sauce. Look, I'll dip two corn tortillas in the sauce, fill each one with shredded rotisserie chicken and melting cheese, fold them in half, and pan fry each side. These are way better than those made from canned sauce, whether you made them this way or the contemporary rolled preparation. Still not sold? Okay, you could braise one inch chunks of pork shoulder in a pot full of red chili sauce, which would reduce into chile colorado, or you could braise one inch chunks of beef chuck in three cups of red chili sauce plus some apple cider vinegar. Then you'd be rocking with carne adobada. The word adobada comes from adobo. Remember talking about that earlier? It's all coming together now. And you know the red sauce inside of shredded pork tamales? That's this stuff. Also, making this sauce is the first step in making pozole. I will link some inspiration for you to make all of these recipes in the description, but they all hinge on perfecting this sauce. So if there was ever a time to learn a technique that enables tamales and pozole, the Christmas season is the time. Andale pues, yeah.